Hey guys, welcome back to the VoIP guys on introducing Asterix. Last time around, we finished off our inbound call configurations for our SIP provider, which means today it is time to start looking at how to configure our provider to make an outbound call on our Asterix phone system. Matthias, what do we need for that? We need two things. We need to manipulate and manipulate our dial plan mm -hmm. so that the dial plan knows when to uh, dial an outside number. Mm -hmm. Um, the next thing is we have to fine-tune our peer okay. and see what we need else uh, for outbound calls and parameters or stuff. So we will find out what's missing and... Okay, then take it away. Yeah. First thing is we edit the dial plan. And in some tutorials in the past, we had a kind of dummy for the outside world. Uh, this was represented by this phone. Mm -hmm. This was the outside world, and we just did it like this. We said, if somebody dialed zero, followed by any number, yep. then go to outgoing context, throw away the leading zero, because mm -hmm. we don't need it, and then this is the number we want to dial, and then just dial zip outside. I have to explain it a little bit. Um, normally, uh, it's like this, you say SIP is the technology you want to use yep. and the peer you want to call is, for instance, James, Matthias, mm -hmm. outside. Yep. If you have just one phone, mm -hmm. which is represented by the peer, okay. then that's okay. Yep. I say I want to call James and then just it calls James, which is one phone and mm -hmm. the phone will ring. Yep. In the case um, we have now, the peer is not one phone, but a provider. But a provider, uh -huh. and the provider represents the whole world. So I can dial every In, number yeah. I want to. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have to change the syntax a little bit, or not to change, to add something to the syntax. Okay. And that's what we have to do now. Um, this is the name of the peer, which is just provider. We were very creative. <laughs> <laughs> Provider. <laughs> and then you add another slash, followed by the number you want to dial. So this is the number. Okay. And mm -hmm. for sure, I don't want to dial just that one number each and every time. Yep. I think that's boring. Mm -hmm. and that's not what you want. It's not very helpful either. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you just call one number. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's enough for you. <laughs> um, you should replace it by uh, the variable which is called x10, where what you want it to dial is stored and put it mm -hmm. um, at the end of uh, the expression. Yeah. And then it says if somebody wants to dial to the outside, he has to add the zero. Mm -hmm. Then the system knows this is a number which is not a local number. Yep. I want to jump to the outside context. and. That's also a good setup if you have different contexts mm -hmm. for that. We explained that a lot of times. So watch out. In one of our many tutorials, yeah. Yes. <coughs> so at least you should have an incoming context, an internal or main context, and mm -hmm. an outgoing. Yeah. Uh, because if not, if everything is in one context, each number or each peer can um, dial each number of your dial plan. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you want, no. I think. So good. if you want to revisit some tutorials because you do not understand what we're talking about. Yes, yeah, then just go to blog.pascom.net and use the search tool. So yeah. You can find what you're looking for. Okay, then we give it a try, but it will not work. But let's see what happens. I have a number here I want to dial. As Matthias, I want to dial this number. And what's important is I need the zero in front. Because the zero first says it's an external number, mm -hmm. followed by the country code of uh, Germany, followed by the number. Yeah. If you want to call a local number, for sure you don't need the country code. Yeah, of course, yeah. Or mm -hmm. the region code if it's in your region. Yeah. But I think this is self-explaining. Mm -hmm. So I want to dial the number and I want to dial it including the country code because we go from one country to the other. Um, give it a try. 
So it was not very successful, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but we can uh, get a lot of information out of here. Um, here we see the dial, zip provider, I want to dial that number. And here you can see asterisk really tries to call the provider and tell him this is the number I want to dial. But then something happens, fail to authenticate on invite to zip Matthias at the local IP address. Mm -hmm. So mean? this does mean um, our provider says, I don't know who is Matthias and I don't know that IP address. Mm -hmm. So the sender of the invite is not what I want to see. Okay. Then mm -hmm. it throws uh, the call away. So what we have to do now is manipulate the peer. Okay. And we want the following situation. If we send a call through the peer, mm -hmm. then it should be set to our user, mm -hmm. which we have from the prov provider. And we should set not our local IP address, but the domain of the provider, because yeah. this is what he expects. Yeah. This may differ from provider to provider, but from my experience in 90%, they want that you, um, if you send an invite, mm -hmm. that the from is your username you have at provider site, mm -hmm. followed by the domain name you yeah. are registering to. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if not, they say you're not authenticated, I don't know who you are. Um, for sure, we will send the password mm -hmm. because we defined it already. Yeah. So we try to authenticate as Matthias at the local number, at the local IP address, plus the password. But that's just not what the provider expects. Right. So we can manipulate the peer now. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this works. That's in the zip.conf. Here is the peer. And we have to add um, something. So one thing is the parameter from domain. From domain means set this domain as from, yep. as sender, mm -hmm. to not the local IP address, but to this domain. So I just type it in there, zip.flowroot.com. This is one thing. If I only would change that parameter, then this would uh, solve half of the problem. Okay. So it would be Matthias at zip.flowroot.com. Mm -hmm. And Flowroot would say, who the fuck is Matthias? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll bleep that part out, I think. <laughs> we'll say, who is this Matthias guy? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But it just does not work, but it's not what they expect. Um, the next thing we need is to manipulate the user in front. Mm -hmm. And there's another um, parameter, which is um, default. We're going to get another strike on YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. This is... Um, our username. This is not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the problems of having uh, a phone live uh, during tutorials. Yeah. I'll have to call that customer back. <laughs> yeah, but we have to. We don't have another phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see how this works. Default user from domain. We have to do zip reload and try it again. Now you can see no error message and somehow it tries to dial and it takes a while and it's a, a private number mm -hmm. because we do not set a caller ID yet or we do set one but the wrong one and then oh, it just does not, no, does, not, does not work. Yeah. Um, we um, can see if you're in, if you're interested in more details, then we can turn the zip debug on. I just make it like this to see when the debug starts. Zip set debug peer provider. Now I enabled the debug. That's it, I don't have to wait until it really calls. So that's okay for me. And now I go back to 
the start of the debug here, you can see the dial. And now you can say, uh, you can see um, that it changed um, the to address and it manipulated the from address. Mm -hmm. And now everything works like the provider expected. Missing calls. Yeah, missing calls. <laughs> uh, I'm a popular person today. <laughs> yeah, it seems so. Yeah. So, but but that's it. Yeah. Um, in most cases, you need the default user. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have to change uh, another parameter, which is called from user, like mm -hmm. from domain. So you have to play around until uh, the provider accepts your call. Uh, sometimes Google helps. So yep. just type in asterisk in the name of the provider. Okay. In mm -hmm. most cases, you will find um, some sort of sort of configuration. But yeah. now you have, uh, with watching our tutorials, now you have mm -hmm. the background knowledge yeah. to know what you are doing and for what you should look for. Of course, and if you don't want to do all of that, then you can always use a provider that's supported by Moby Dick in connection. You can buy a Moby Dick with a Moby Dick phone system. And off and, off everything is very, very easy. Yeah, with good. <laughs> right. On that note, I think it's time to end before yes. we get too far down, uh, down the street, and I should go call this customer back. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Uh, we will be back next time around when you said we were going to have a look at how to mm -hmm. get the caller ID transmitted with the call as well. Yeah. And yeah, so thanks very much for watching. Until then, goodbye. See you.